Okay, today in this video I'll take you through my process of working through from start to finish. On this one I'll be using the Leon or the professional video that I made, so I'll give you a little insight. So first of all I've got to make the PNG sequence. JPEG sequences work too, but PNG you get a lot more detail in them. I'm using After Effects, so to do that all I need to do is make a PNG sequence. So first of all I want to set my comp settings to the FPS I need, 24, 12, 8, whatever your preference is, and name it if you want to. Make sure the size and everything is all the same. I'm going to knock this one down to 12. I mean, you can use 8 if you want a more cartoony feel, but 12 seems a bit smoother. I mean, I'll try it out at 8 frames in the next video, I'll try. So then what you want to do is, once you've got all your settings done, you want to export it. Uh, you don't need the new After Effects if you are using After Effects and this is all built into the other ones I mean I did show you how to do this in the previous tutorial on making masks but basically you just want to export it as a PNG sequence so I'll click down there, find PNG sequence and then you need to just name it whatever you want and don't forget your naming here is what you have to name everything your keyframes and your mask frames all have to have the same name and be the same size otherwise EVSynth has a hissy fit and doesn't want to play nice <clears throat> I mean you can use any other programs I think a lot of other programs like DaVinci Resolve and uh, Hits Film and all that there's plenty of free programs out here that will let you make PNG sequences I mean for this one for the sake of this tutorial I'll just put it screen one tut and rename the folder that I want to put it in. As you can see already on the screen, I've got my keyframes, I've got my mat, I've got my out, which is what the EVSynth will render out as, and I've got my PNG sequences. What I like to do as well is bump up the contrast and take out all colour, so it's black and white. Um, I find on foggier pictures or movie clips that you're using, EVSynth tends to pick it up a bit better. So now as you can see in here in the shots, I've shot one, two, three, and four. I broke it down into the different scenes. Uh, we're working on shot one now, which is just Leon lying on the floor. As you can see, the PNG sequence has a bit at the back because the blank screen frames you need to delete. All that is, is with the frame rate conversion, you'll get a couple of blanks at the back just to add it all up. But when you put it back in, once you've um, exported it out in EBSynth, you can go straight into After Effects if you have After Effects. If not, bank those black screens off and then bring it into whichever one you want. Okay, now once I've got those PNG sequences, the next stage is I want to make my masks. So, the green screen, you take the green screen footage, uh, you keep the original footage and you enlarge your green screen footage. Like I said before, all your sizes have to be identical. If they're not, EBSynth doesn't work with them. So your keyframes, your mask frames, and your original footage all has to be identical. They all have to have the same numbering values and the same named values. Otherwise, EBSynth can't interpolate them all together. So here, I have got a tutorial, my previous tutorial, I'll put it in the description or I'll put it on a card up the corner here now for you to uh, reference, but this is how I make my masks. Basically the same, you take your green screen footage, I use key light, blank it out, use a screen mat, up the contrast, up the brightness to give you sharp edges, and then render it out in a PNG sequence like we did previously. It's nice, easy, and it stops any of the ghosting or the leakage that you get with some movement on EBSynth. Basically what happens with this is EBC, EBSynth only looks within the white area for the information it needs. So with the information it needs, it ignores everything in the black. So if you do get a ghost or a stream or any artifacts coming up, it cuts them off. So it gives you nice crisp outlines. Again, the naming, screen one underscore tut just for the purposes of this demonstration as you can see already in the boxes I've got everything sorted 
So, and it's out. Right. When I'm drawing the keyframes, which you'll see shortly, there's two ways of doing it. You can add a background that's green, and then that basically gives you your green screen, or you can leave the alpha channel. Right. The program I use for my drawings is Sketchbook Pro. This is a free program. Uh, none of this in this video is paid promotion. These are just what I happen to use. So the drawing, what you want to do is you want to open one of the scenes of the PNG shots that you've got because then it keeps everything the same size. If you pull them into the program and then resize them, it won't work. You need to keep them all the same size. And then what I do is I knock down the opacity, add another layer on top, which I'm going to do the inking, trace round, draw round. Then what I do is add another layer for colour, another layer for shadows, another layer for highlights, depending on how detailed you want to do it. You can use the background as a uh, the alpha layer so there's nothing in the background especially if you're using png it's nice and easy you've got that background option or you can do it as a green background so you can use it as a green screen so once everything's done and this one i've used the background as a green screen so then you can key it out after but the other footage i've just done the alpha so this is the final footage i only use one keyframe for the first shot because there's very little movement other than his mouth and ev synths picked it up well so then what you want to do is to name it the same as the footage, open up as a PNG sequence, you'll see it. If you click on it, it'll automatically rename as that. Then you jump out and you put it in your keyframes folder. So it'll go from your video folder, PNG, rename it, click on whichever frame you were using, it will automatically rename it and then save it as a keyframe. Then you bring everything into EBSynth. Keyframes, your video, and your masks if you wish to use masks you need to turn on the masks first otherwise it won't be able to do and then drag and drop your keyframes into your keyframes your mat into your mat your footage into your footage with the advanced tabs you can mess around with the quality the mask rates all that type of thing depending on the footage you do and how strong your computer is how powerful uh, render times can vary i mean i'm working on a little Lenovo laptop here it's not very powerful but it does the job and once you've got your outs there they are that's for this scene they're all there you drag them into whichever program you wish I'm using After Effects so I just click on the top export to After Effects match the frame rate and it does it for me especially if you've got multiple frames this is a lot easier if you've got multiple keyframes because it does it for you then what I do use Keylight again to mask it out Uh, I pull in the original footage because I cheat a little bit here. Uh, I pull in the original footage and place it underneath. That way it gives you the background. And then with this, what I do is I open up Red Giant. I have the Red Giant Tunit. So with Red Giant Tunit, it will cartoonize the background for you. It saves drawing yourself. And plus, if there's a little movement in the background, it automatically does all that for you. It doesn't look as good, but it's a start. Depending on how deep you want to go into this, you can draw your own background, animate your own background, make it a still. I mean, there's loads you can do to this. Once we've done all that, uh, you can go into your Red Giant looks as well, Universal looks or whatever it is and if you want the VHS look or the S look you can do that or you've got all sorts of film gradients and everything if you want to use those suites I'm sure there's built-in looks and plugins that you can get for all the other programs as well to mimic these type of things but right now the VHS look seems to be what everybody's doing I mean it's a good look it hides some of the artifacts in your animations like the ghosting or whatnot or line work when it starts to jump or the shading when it starts to move slightly uh, it tends to hide that very well but for the sake of this I mean a nice clean clean lines there's not much movement in there so it's not going to mess around too much and here's the final result this is Through the hand, there's plenty of ghosting, but it keeps the line work out. Should have had more keyframes there, and then this is the VHS look. 
And then, as you can see, it kind of hides some of the ghosting and the little line work and all that. It gives it a more romantic view. So that was how I did that. The multiple shots were all built up similar and then added together in After Effects and all done. I hope you enjoyed this. And if you'd like anything else, please leave a like and a comment down below.